Ah, you know what it is, man. This one is about two brothers in Lewisburg. Sit back, enjoy the ride, because it's how we do. Don't say nothing about me riding, man. I... want to have some fun, man. Unique make audio, man. This is what it is. I'm going to tell you about two brothers in, in Lewisburg, you know. One was from D.C., one was from New York, you know. I'm going to keep it 100. Back in the days, yeah, D.C. and New York had bad blood because there was dudes going down that wasn't really cut from that cloth, so therefore they had bad blood with the brothers that was cut from that cloth, you know. And, you know, sometimes the brothers that was cut from the cloth might make the brothers that is cut from a cloth that's moving a little different to think that because they're moving different that they're not cut from the same cloth when they both cut from the same cloth, but their movements is just different. You know what I mean? Their styles, their swag is just different. You know what I mean? So you don't look at something and you say, oh, uh, that that's bad. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, you know, it's all that, you know? And you see something else, you say, oh, it's all right. You know, and then as time go on, then you realize that, damn, both of them joints is bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you just made a first impression. But anyway, let me go. We got two brothers in uh, Lewisburg, one from D.C., one from New York. I'm going to speed up because I slowed it down with a little rambling, so I'm going to get back to where I'm at. Two brothers, you know what I mean? The D.C. brother had a sister, you know, that married a Jamaican roster in Brooklyn, you know, so dude in Brooklyn, he chilling and he getting money and all that. So the dude from D.C. used to go up to go see his sister and spend time over there with the roster. So he picked up those ways, you know, then he goes back to D.C. and he got his D.C. swag, you know. So then now he's locked up. So he kind of blend in with us to give you a good ride, you know, where I'm at. So now he blending in with us and we look at him like he one of us because he got the New York roster swag. He got the D.C. swag, you know but he's from D.C. So we decided to open up um, some gambling cells where we put, you know, CeeLo in one cell and we had craps in another cell, but we was both running it and we was both eating from both cells, you know what I mean? Because we the ones that started the, you know, the, the boom, 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 <laughs> you know? So we got the joint jumping, but everybody is coming from the crap cell over into the CeeLo cell. And that's where, you know, the New York is running at. You know what I mean? So everybody gravitated there, and the crap cell was always empty, you know? So the dude that was running the crap cell came over there, so now he's looking, he inquisitive, and he about getting money, so he want to put up a couple of cartons of cigarettes, you know, on, on, on a couple of rolls, you know? Back then, we had cigarettes. We didn't have stamps. Stamps wasn't money. You couldn't sell stamps for nothing. You know, back in 94, 95 in Lewisburg. Let's get that right. I mean, now, you know what I mean? You know, so you understand what I'm talking about. These are stamps. I'm talking about, you know, mailing stamps. You know, this is currency now in the prison. Back then that I'm telling you about, it was cartons of cigarette. You had 10, uh, you know, 10 packs in a carton, and they sold a carton for like $18 at the store, and... You take the carton and you sell it on the compound for twelve dollars on the store. So that's what it's worth, you know. And uh, so if you sell it to somebody, let's say they buy uh, ten boxes, you know what I mean? That'd be one hundred twenty dollars. You give them the ten cartons, you know, for a hundred dollars straight. Their family send the money. Now they got ten cartons of cigarette, and each pack of cigarette is what they use to sell whatever, you know. So, you know, that's how that's moving, right? So everything is good. So he gambling and he, you know, bust a couple of rolls and as he bust these rolls, he losing, he losing, he get up to like 800 and we telling them, yo, chill, because the dudes that was losing in the, uh, in the CeeLo sale, you know, was starting to win their money back off of him 
and he's down with us, so they're really getting it back from the house. So he don't need to play because we just cutting the dice. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a pack of cigarettes, every head crack. You know what I mean? You know, something like that. You know, for those of y'all that know what I'm talking about, if you don't, you know what I mean? That's a whole other video. You know, somebody explain to them what a head crack is. You know? So that's how that go. So dude get up to 800, we telling them fall back because dude's winning their money back. He ain't trying to hit but we got the pack coming in tomorrow. You know what I mean? We got a nice little shipment of some, you know, you know, uh, balloons coming in tomorrow, some drugs coming in tomorrow. So, you know, and we getting all the money. We got the crap game, the CeeLo game. We doing our thing, you know, but the next day we got something coming in. So while this joint coming in the next day, the night before, dude decides to get in the game. He run it up to 800. You know what I mean? We tell him to chill. He argued us down. We let him get another 400. So he ran it up to 1200. But these dudes are winning their money back from the house, so now we are losing. So he's losing our money back, even though he's our partner. So my man told him, yo, I'm going to give you this 400 That's it. So he put it at an even, you know, 1200 So he lost that. So now he getting his feelings, you know. So he started arguing with, you know, the New York homie that's running the joint. And New York homie, real aggressive, just came from up north. You know what I mean? Only been on the street like six months and caught the Fed case, so he still got that up north aggression. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. So he's like, nah, you know, whoop, whoop, whoop. So they get to arguing, and, you know, before you know it, one run downstairs, you know, to go get his knife. The other one run upstairs to go get his knife, you know? Then he come back. And that's when all hell broke loose. You know what I mean? That's when all hell broke loose. You know? Because now nah, these two brothers got the knives out. And they're tussling, you know, on the stairs. So dude come walking on the stairs and he tried to swing. The New York dude went to swing the knife at him like this coming down the stairs. But remember, his momentum is going forward. So as it's going forward, he's moving faster than he expected to move, you know? And the D.C. dude, he just turned. He was running down the stairs. That's why dude went to try and stab him. So when he, the D.C. dude turned around real quick, he had his knife in his hand because he running with his joint in his hand. And the dude, momentum was coming because he was trying to take his head off with his knife, you know. And the D.C. dude wound up stabbing the New York homie and puncturing his lung. You know? So if this is what you youngins want, this, this, this joint is for you. It ain't to brag, it ain't to boast, it ain't to glamorize, it ain't to do none of that. This is for the youngins watching this to know that this is what's going on in the prison. And that's how easy you lose your life. That's how easy you lose a lung. So if you want to violate, go to prison, you think you could deal with it, feel free to do what you want to do. I'm telling you, you got the freedom to do what you want to do. But just know that when you do, and you wind up on the wrong side, just remember to shut the F up. That's all. Play by the rules. Don't dishonor the game. But don't get in the game. I'm telling you don't get in the game. But I'm telling you, if you choose to get in the game, this is how you move. If you're not going to move like that, don't get involved in the game because you're going to wind up in a situation, in an environment that you never dreamed of. Because none of that is allowed. You know, none of that is allowed. But anyway, you know what I mean? Because I like to ride, man. You know, I like to ride. Let, 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 let's get this. I, 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 you know, I like to ride. That's how I ride. You know what I mean? That's how I ride. All right? So we riding. But I just wanted to talk to the youth real quick to let them know what was going on with that so that they fully understand, man, that this ain't no joke. This ain't nothing to play with, you know. But, you know, like I said, dude swinging the knife, he coming down. Dude turns around, the knife winds up. And hitting his lung, you know? So now they had to run the stretcher down there to come get him. So they got the homie on the stretcher, right? And the homie going up the hallway on the stretcher. And, you know, so they got everybody locked in, but everybody's at the door because the deuces went off. So they knew something happened. So we run to the door so we could see in the hallway who's getting locked up, what color, what race, if it's your homie or whatever. And that's how we do. So the deuces went off, everybody at the joint, they bring my man out on the stretcher. And while they were on the stretcher, my man leaned up and he gave everybody a peace sign that he all right. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? He just got his lung punctured. You know, but that's how gangsters move, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, I, I'm not even going to front. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm an old man now, and I'm telling you, don't do it. Don't get involved. But, you know, it was a beautiful sight to see the loyalty to the game because he ain't tell that he was fighting with the homie, da, 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 none of that that was happening. You know? He just told everybody I'm all right. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he did what he had to do. You know, it was a one-on-one, -on -one and, you know, it, it, he all right. You know what I mean? So we don't always need the car to crash when men could handle their own differences. And win or lose, you know, that could be your life, you know, and you don't get no do-overs. That's why I say don't put yourself in that situation because you don't get no do-overs. There is no, yo, run that back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me try again. When your life is gone, it's gone. So that's why I say fall back, man, and think about it. You know, the youngins running around with these guns and all that. You're not, you're not giving your ops a, a do-over. You're not giving them a chance for a do-over. Put the guns down. You know what I mean? Knuckle up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And give them a do-over. That's how I was raised. Put the guns down and knuckle up. That's what it's about, you know? Because then you can get a do-over. And that's how men do. It's, it's easy to pull a trigger. You know, it's, it's easy to pull a trigger. A three-year-old kills somebody. It's easy to pull a trigger, you know? But it takes skill to knuckle up, you know? And that's how you exercise your differences, man, man. I'm just trying to let y'all know what time it is so you understand that it wasn't worth it. But, you know, the homie got locked up, you know? Because I'm just riding, man. I'm just riding, you know? <laughs> All right? Now, the homie got locked up. And when you get locked up after a situation like that, you know, they put both of y'all in, you know, separate areas of the shoot, you know, because now y'all on separate teeth, meaning you'll never see each other again, <laughs> you know? That's how the feds work. They do what they call separate teeth. You know, like how New York got key block, the feds ain't locking nothing up. You know what I mean? They want to mark you, label you, and push you out into one of their systems that they got out there. You know, whether, you know, it's a rat camp or, you know, it's a gladiator camp or it's a FCI or it's a low or it's a medium, you know, that's what they do. You know, bag them and tag them and ship them in, you know, in the plantations, get them to work, you know, and then they got the good old unicorn. They got the good old unicorn. Let's not forget the unicorn, you know. So, you know, it is what it is, man, but. You know, I just wanted to tap in for a minute. I've been really chilling. I got some good content coming for y'all. Make sure you tune in to um, my Roco channel, Unique Mecca Audio, and, um, you know, podcast, Spotify, all that, Unique Mecca Audio, and cop the book of Rowan Harlem. It is what it is. Cash app on the screen. The game is to be sold, not told. The lames that don't like it, I got one thing to say to you. Gunshots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Gunshots. You know, let's get this thing riding. You know, but that's how we ride. You know, that's how we ride over here at the Mecca, you know. So a lot of people don't like it. You got time to tap out. Go find another channel that's riding the way you want to ride. But this is how we want to ride, you know. I'm just schooling them, giving them a little game, you know, on these good Sundays, nice and early still, 12-something. So, you know, it is what it is, man, you know. But we here. Last night I went um, and I celebrated at uh, the um, Harlem uh, Honors Awards. Big shout-out to Bunny. You know, that drunk was fire last night. I'm going to put up a video on it. I'm getting some footage together now. They honored, uh, you know, Sugar J. You know what I mean? He represented. Of course, you know, he was shining as always, looking like a million. You know, Dap introduced him because that was the big homie for the fashion for New York. And uh, they also had, uh, who else did they had up there? And they did uh, Guy Fisher, you know. Guy Fisher drunk with fire, you know, he gave a nice little history on him growing up, you know, I got that, I'm going to put it up on the YouTube at Unique Mech Audio right here, <laughs> you know, but, you know, it, it, it was a powerful moment to see all those, you know, black warriors in there that fought to hold the Apollo down, to keep it amongst us, you know, and I think those brothers and sisters deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Relax. Relax. You know, but that's what I'm saying. You know, but that's how Harlem did it, though. You know, it was up in there. Um, they had Jeff Red perform. I videotaped that, too. I got that up on my Instagram at Unique Mecca Audio. Go see 
you know, Jeff Red, Capone, Sugar J getting his award. Uh, I think ASAP Rocky was there, you know. ASAP Rocky, you know, he got an award. He came up there, did a good speech. I mean, it was funny, man. I mean, it was good to see one of the homies back home doing good. It was all love in there, man. I didn't feel, I didn't feel or smell one drop of hate. It was all love up in there, man. You know, it was love, man. And then, you know, um, then they had the little halftime and the halftime, everybody went up to the bar and I'm walking through and I'm like, damn, I've been gone for the Apollo so long, three decades that, you know, the bar seems small. You know how you go back to your, your grade school and when you was going there, the ceilings felt so high, but now that you're adult, you know, you're walking with your neck bent over in them joints, you know? That's what it felt like in the Apollo for me yesterday, man, to give you a feeling after three decades, meaning what I thought was big back then from where my mentality was, you know what I mean? It was really small, you know, compared to reality. Y'all might not understand that, because too much juice, you know what I mean? When I say, you know, too much water drown the plant, too much uh, sunlight, definitely going to burn it. And I definitely ain't trying to burn you. I definitely ain't trying to drown you. I'm just, you know, trying to elevate with you so that we can move together as one, you know what I mean? And bring our people together, man, and stop the youth from pushing the guns, you know what I mean? From killing each other. Like I said, man, there's no do-overs in that. But give them a do-over. Knuckle up. You know what I mean? Knuckle up. I'd rather see 20, 20 young dudes fighting in the middle of the street, you know what I mean, than one young dude driving by shooting 20 bullets in the middle of the street. You know? I wouldn't want none of it, you know what I mean? But if I had to pick one, uh, one of the lesser of two evils, you know what I mean? So, you know, maybe we need to open up more community centers or something, get some boxing gyms in there so they could go in there and get their aggression out, you know, from their young, they could grow with each other and not to use their knuckles when they get mad at each other. And I think that's what the problem is. You know, the media society try to tell you it's not good to fight this and that. When you, this is, this is, this is survival. So you never know when you have to fight for survival. You're not fighting to be an aggressor, you know? You know, you're just fighting to survive or to, to defend yourself. So you still must learn to fight, but they try to take, take fight out of the equation. Come on, man. You know, it, they don't, it, don't, they, you know, it don't work that way. But I've been on here long enough. I just wanted to tap in, man, let everybody know it is what it is. You know, I've been chilling. I'm having a good time. Everything good. You know what I mean? Let's get the gunshots. Let's get the gunshots. <laughs> All right? So that's, that, that's how we going to handle that today. All right. Cheers. 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 The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix, yeah. what he mentions a gift, Trust. you stand up 10 toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this, Real. take a little gully posse and put it in haul, uh. he cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom, Back. drop the book, you should go and get it, an Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit, yeah. then you could consider yourself linked in, Real. sit front row and get juice from a kingpin, uh. how he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it, uh -huh. did not pay attention would be stupid, talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio hey. Get it live like two G's in the 90s. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. 
Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie Linda Ed. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude. 